So now it's time to put the crank in and start measuring the clearance of the bearings. So what we need to do is clean where the bearing is going to sit, push the new bearings in, uh, put the crank in, torque it to spec, put the plastic gauge or the put the plastic gauge between it, torque it to spec, get it loose, see if all the bearing, if all the things clear, then uh, we are good to go to put the shaft in permanently. <laughs> Here we have the ACL bearings, which should be good from the get-go, but we're gonna plastic gauge it anyway. Let's put those bearings in. There we are good to test. So all the bearings are in place now, so we can put the crank in. I will prepare the caps to be installed. So now that the crank is in, we can put the plastic gauge on it and then uh, torque it down and see what the plastic gauge tells us in terms of clearance so uh, that's the next step and once that's all clear um, probably gonna install the oil squirters uh, and then the crank and then we can torque it down to what it needs to be for final assembly then we can move on to the pistons so uh, let's get this right bottom half is almost done when the pistons are in it is done so So now we are going to tighten the bolts to 20 newton meters and then 70 degrees of angles. So uh, yeah, let's start torquing. So now it's time to angle them to 70 degrees. I've never done this before, so it's gonna probably look a bit clumsy, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. So all the bolts are torqued and angled. So basically what we can do now is take it all off again, check the clearance of the bearings, and if it's all good, we can mount it for good. So I got the plastic gauge here, as you can see, focus the stripes on the 
crankshaft. So what we do is we put the plastic gauge next to it and the camera focuses. It if the camera focuses, but the stripe is about 00, 0, 0 0.05, which is all these stripes on the crank. So in terms of clearance, we're all good with the ACL bearings and the crank is good as well. So what we're gonna do now is clean the bearings again, clean the crank again, put the assembly loop on it, and then we can put the crank in for good and move on to the pistons and rods. I forgot to tell you is that we need to install the oil sprockets, which are these ones that go below the crank. So in order to tighten them correctly, we need to do it before the crank goes in. So let's take those and put them in. come that we are gonna torque the crankshaft for good so I'll put these support plates in um, just a couple of bolts so they do bolts so they don't move so we're gonna oil up the bolts again turn them all the way around then 20 newton meters then 70 degrees and then the crank is in for good so yeah exciting stuff So it's time to move on to the pistons. As you can see, the crankshaft is turning very nicely, very smooth. So it's uh, time to clear that table and start putting the piston rings on to get into the block. All right, here we have all the pistons and rods. Here we have the bearings and here we have the piston rings. So what I think I'm gonna do is uh, clean them again or like just rub them with a towel and some uh, yeah, just clean them, install the piston rings. Oh no, wait, I will just install the bearings first, then the piston rings. I'll do that for each of them, and then we turn the block around, and then we're gonna put them in. So uh, let's start with piston one, A, B, C, top, middle, bottom. So we did all the pistons, so piston rings plus uh, bearings. So what we're gonna do now is turn the block around and start with putting the actual pistons in the block and then connecting the connecting rods to the crankshaft. And then doing that six times for six pistons. This is about the bottom center. So now we'll grab piston one and start putting it in. All right, that's one in.
pistons and rods are in place. We're gonna take the caps off, uh, put some assembly loop on it and then torque them to spec and uh, check if everything is uh, okay. <laughs> So all the connecting rods are torqued and angled, so that should mean that the uh, rotating assembly is completed. So what's next is, what's here, don't mind the mess, but the oil pump. I got new spring and C-clip and piston, so we're gonna rebuild that. Then together with the oil shield, which is somewhere else, we can put it over here and then the bottom end is done except the uh, of course the uh, oil pan so yeah so here we got the oil pump this is all the oil old parts so uh, yeah this is what's staying but these are going for new ones that are in here all we need to do now is put the spring and the piston with the new gasket in, put the C-clip in, then we can put this back in, in here, and then we need to find a way to lock the nut so the sprocket can not go off. But first, we'll start with the new spring and the new piston. So that was the video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh. So this was before, yeah, I mentioned the last video there were some issues with the engine. So what you saw was before we fixed that, so the engine had to go down in pieces again. And uh, we got the issues fixed and now it's all good. So next video you're probably gonna see the car back again. I'm gonna give you a little, little sneak peek. Oh. So. That's coming next week and probably after that we are going to continue with the engine because um, yeah, there hasn't been that much progress made. I'm waiting on some parts to uh, arrive on the BMW and then uh, we can finish the engine because that's um, 
I think top priority now because it's such a major part that needs to be done. So yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys liked it. Um, of course, there are probably gonna be some mistakes I made in this uh, video or things I didn't do the proper way. So um, this is just my first time building an engine. So to be honest, I have really no idea what I'm doing. I'm just following what advice people give me and what the manual says and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.